to become faithful followers of Jesus the Christ. My prayer is that you will uphold and love the Bud's Promise Pledge to be reverent to God, useful to man, do God's will, and strengthen your faith with prayer. 
don't be surprised. Watch God work in your life, doing good things, showering you with blessings of love, joy, and peace. Think about it. One is never too young to know the love of God. Also remember, there are those of us who trust you, care about you, and love you. Believe you to tell the truth, to spread the word of Jesus, and to go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is King. Try in every way you can to do all the good you can for all the people you can for as long as you can. May God bless and keep you and enjoy today on this Marie L. Clinton Day as we celebrate. And I leave you with this scripture from Matthew 18 coming from the King James Version, the African Bible. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. This is the word of God for the people and the children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hey Lennox, how are you handling this COVID pandemic? I wash my hands. What else? Do it with soap. Mask. Wear my mask and six, six feet. Good job. A few years later, the Philistines collect their forces for an attack against Israel. Saul masses his army against them, and David's three oldest brothers join the king's forces. One evening, David comes in from the fields to find his father busy packing food. This is for your brothers. I want you to take it to them. I'll leave right away. What's the latest news from the battlefront? Not good. I'm worried. The not good news is this. A giant is fighting for the Philistines. All the Israelites are scared of him, including King Saul. What's going on? What's going on? Listen to that giant. Why do you bother lining up for battle? Just send out a man who dares to fight me. If he kills me, then the Philistines will all put down their weapons and be your servants. But if I kill him, you will be our servants. Who is this unclean Philistine that thinks he can defy the army of God? That's Goliath. The king has said that whoever defeats him will receive great wealth, Saul's own daughter, and best of all, he'll never have to pay taxes again. But no man dares to face Goliath. Eliab, David's oldest brother, overhears David asking about Goliath. What are you doing here, mouthing off? Why aren't you home where you belong, taking care of the sheep? Father sent me here with food for you, and I'm not mouthing off. This Philistine is insulting our God. 
Ever since the prophet Samuel chose David instead of him, Eliab has been filled with jealousy. Now his shame burst into the open. You're just a spoiled kid who wants to watch a battle for your own fun. No, I just hate to see our God disrespected. I'll fight the giant. David's words spread through the camp. Oh, king, there is one person who will fight, but bring him here at once. David enters Saul's tent, but Saul does not recognize this young shepherd as the same boy who used to play for him. An untrained teenager? You can't fight a giant. He's an elite warrior. I am a shepherd. I have killed bears and lions to protect my sheep. The Lord is our shepherd. So God will help me kill this Philistine to protect my people. Spoken with courage and faith. Go and the Lord be with you. May even wear my own armor to protect you from this monster. I can't wear this. I'm not used to fighting in armor. Besides, my plan is not to defend myself, but to attack. I don't need armor, just some stones for my sling. With only a shepherd's staff and a sling, David goes out to meet the Philistine giant. The armies of both camps watch the champions as they face each other. <laughs> Do you think I'm a dog that you can chase me away with sticks and stones? I'll give thee a flesh to the wild animals. You come with a sword, a spear, and a shield, but I come in the name of God who will give me the victory. The giant laughs, but David whirls his sling, takes careful aim, and lets the stone fly. Ooh. David has slain Goliath with a single shot from his sling. He runs to the body, grabs Goliath's sword, and holds it up in victory. Let everyone know that our God does not need human weapons. This battle is the Lord's, and he has delivered the Philistines to us. It must have been God. Who else could a mere boy defeat Goliath? In terror, the Philistines flee for their lives, spurred on by the sudden turn of events. The excited Israelites chase the Philistines back to their own land. Two, three, give me a J! Yeah! You got your J! You got Thank your you J. J! Give me a E! Yeah. You got your E! You got your E! <laughs> give me a S! You got your ass, you got your ass, give me a U. Yeah. You got your U, you got your U, yeah. give me a S. Yeah. You got your ass, you got your ass, what is his name? Yeah. Who is he? Yeah. What's his name? Yeah. Who is he? My name is Shira Singletary and the song I'm singing is Thank You to the King. I hope you guys like it, starting now. Take me to the king I don't have much to bring My heart is torn in pieces It's my offering Take me to the king Truth is on time I'm from so I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm on church house, hurt and abused. Leave me cry, but stay on the stone, refusing to die. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone. My pain to call your glory. Sing to you this song. Please take me to the king. 
truth is on time Just let me make me taste The way you need your work The people
This is the meaning of the law of Moses and the teaching of the prophets. All right. Thank Caleb, you. the strong Thomas, the wise friend, be rebel to God, useful to man, do God's will, and strengthen my faith through prayer. We're God's a promise, working for the Master, striving to please Him and do His holy will. Working, working together, and loving and kind, and loving and kindness, trusting and praying. His word to fulfill blooming, blooming all for Jesus, blooming all for Jesus. Buds of promise are we, learning all the mission cause, blooming all for Jesus, blooming all for Jesus. Someday we'll bloom into flowers for Him. Let us declare our faith by the use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thus she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Hello, my name is Rosemary. For it is as when a man going into another country called his own servant and delivered unto them his goods and unto, unto one he gave five talents to another two to another one to each according to his several abilities and he went on his journey straightway he that received the five talents went and traded with them and made other five talents and like the manners he also that received the two gains other two but he that received the one went away and dig in the earth and hide his lord money Mrs. Marie Louise Clay Clinton was the organizer and first superintendent of the Buzz of Promise Juvenile Missionary Society. She was born in Huntsville, Alabama in 1871. Mrs. Clinton was the wife of Bishop George Wiley Clinton. She loved children and having none of her own, she dedicated her life to children's work. She understood the importance of Christian training for our very young children. Mrs. Clinton worked diligently to see that children be included as part of the General Missionary Society. In 1904, her request to include the children as an organized department of the Missionary Society was taken to the General Conference in St. Louis, Missouri. It was then that the department was adopted and through her efforts became permanently known as the Buzz of Promise Department in 1908. Mrs. Clinton served as the General Superintendent for 20 years until 1932 and remained an enthusiastic worker until her death in 1934. In 1951, the Missionary Convention in Wilmington, North Carolina, voted that a day be set aside in order to honor the founder of the Buzz of Promise Department. Because of Mrs. Marie L. Clinton's love and devotion to children and work of missions, the fourth Sunday of January is recognized as the Marie L. Clinton Day. This morning, my friends, our young messenger, an intelligent, conscientious gentleman is quiet, reserved, respectful, and a faithful child of God. He knows the word, studies the word, and seeks to grow in the wisdom and knowledge of Jesus Christ. This young man excels academically as well. Last fall, he plays first in the Transformation AME Zion Church Spring Festival in our spelling bee. And listen to this. Just last Saturday at the Eastern Shore District Super Saturday event, he amassed over 17,000 points in the Kahoot Challenge, answering questions about the Bible, the church, and mission taking first place wow see what i mean he is somebody we are so proud to introduce to you this morning the son and middle child of brother adrian and dr josepha howard brother 
Jerusalem Howard. Sit back in your seats and listen to the word of God and it comes from our brother in Christ, Jerusalem Howard. Hello, my name is Jerusalem Howard and I am broadcasting this message from Transformation AME Zion Church where the pastor is the Reverend Dr. R.J. Chandler Sr. 702 Maple Parkway, located in Dover, Delaware. And I wanted to give a shout out to the Buds of Promise and say, Happy Marie Clinton Day. Today, I am going to talk about keeping the peace during the pandemic. Point number one, pray. You should pray to God every day and ask him for forgiveness. If you pray, you might not catch COVID-19. If you do catch COVID-19 or your family, you can pray and prayerfully God can heal you. Point number two, read. You should read your Bible every day and you should pick verses that make you happy and motivated. If you don't know any verses yet, you can just flip randomly and read any verse. If, you, I mean, if you're flipping, maybe God can tell you where to go. Point number three, listen in. You should listen in to church services online, such as Transformation Scott church videos. This will keep you motivated and in the word. If you, I mean, you might be able to meet the pastor or whoever's talking after the pandemic or during the pandemic with a face mask. Point number four, help others. You should help others so they can know all the good that they need to know, that you know, and also they can know what's bad so they don't do it. If you had a copy of yourself, you would want to tell yourself that, and you want to tell yourself that the good stuff, what to do for the good stuff, and tell that the bad stuff is not good so they don't do it. Well, it's yourself, so you don't do it. And for my last point, point number five, is God loves you. God loves you so much that he gave Jesus, Jesus Christ to the world, which you can find in John 3.16. And during this pandemic and after, you should love others because God loved you first. Now, I will give a scripture. My scripture is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and to which whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but will have everlasting life. And now I'll give prayer to close this out. I pray that we can all have a great time during this pandemic, even though everything might be a little bit overwhelming. I pray that you can guide us through this pandemic and that you may forgive all our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye. Now my friends and brothers, sisters, Last but not least, let me thank my beautiful friend and brother, Jerusalem Howard, for his dynamic message. I know you understand because you're a student of the Bible that Jesus told his parents, don't you know that I'm about my father's business? And you impress me as being that kind of a person who is about your father's business.
doing the will of God. We took to heart your message. It told us to pray and to read and to listen and to learn and to help others and to know that God loves us. What a beautiful word. What a spiritual word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your commitment to God. And thank you so much for your message coming from John 3:16. Keep up the good work and don't you worry. We'll be right there beside you to support you in everything and anything you do. Don't forget how much we love you. Thank you for sharing today. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. That was the example for us to know the beauty and the dignity and the love of giving. Won't you give? Won't you share and show the love of God as God showed his love for us? To give is to love and to love is to give. Feel free to give in your own way to Transformation AME Zion Church and Scott AME Zion Church. The pastor will post the address and the means by which you may share your gifts. For God gave them to us just to let us borrow. And now we give and show our love by giving back to God. Thank you for your love of God and your gift of giving. Amen. All things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. And now my friends, let me just say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for participating in this, our bud service today, the Marie Clinton Day service celebration. Thank you, thank you. Everyone was so beautifully gifted by God today to share their love of God and to share the importance and how important it is to be a young missionary. The BUDS is the Young Missionary Association of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. And then the word tells us, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's what we all want to do and we want to follow the word of God. And this is what I hope we're doing, being obedient to the word of God. Thank you so very, very much for sharing with us today as we've been a part of this wonderful service. Thank the messenger, thank the scripture readers, thank the singers, thanks to everyone. Did I miss anybody? Thank you so much, Caleb. Thanks to everybody for all you did to make the Marie L. Clinton Day a day to praise the Lord. May God bless and keep you always. And just remember, we love you. But Jesus, the Christ, loves you even more. Amen. It's always so good to share with you the word of God and the love of God and to fellowship one with the other in worshiping God, our Father, Savior. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy 
to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen and amen.